Okay, here are the first two Rotomatic robots. They went through quite a few changes. You notice one of them is taller than the other. Let's uh, give enough room here to run one of them. You have your basic walking action, and then it rotates. The arms move. You have a lot of blinking lights and turning rotor on top of the head. Is that getting in the frame? I'm using a uh, Geneva movement, the time when the locking stops and the body rotation starts. <clears throat> One had a, a kind of a clicker sound added to it in the bass. Makes kind of a squeaking sound, not severe clicking or anything. I'm gonna run off the table here if I'm not careful. So um, there was earlier videos if you want to see just the bass. Let's see on the YouTube channel. Where's my zoom? It was like uh, the first one, I think, and then the second one. I can put links to them down in the description if you want, showing you uh, what's going on there. But uh, I've also got uh, photographs here. I can kind of show a little bit of what's going on. A uh, big change that. Uh, made everything work so much better was rather than having the two body halves just rubbed together <clears throat> I put in some bearings to do that I just found a, a bag of beads I had laying around and used some straight pins as the axles and this is this is the plate that the body mounts on so once you put these beads in it can turn real easy here's the bottom side you can see where they come through and they kick through Here's where the little latch locks up. This is showing close up on the feet. A change that I made in these particular feet, you notice how the axles can aim upwards in their slot. Here are the wheels down here. And uh, by aiming upwards, the weight of the body will keep the wheel in the locked position. And when the foot goes forward, you need the wheel to turn. So the wheel, because this is curved, this thing that it locks onto, will push the wheel back so it can ratchet then immediately when it needs to lock, it already is locked. So this is a normally closed type switch on the ratchets rather than normally open. It's much more efficient. There's the Geneva movement. The motor has a, a drive that goes up, which I use for turning the antenna on top of the head and moving the arms. And then has the drive that goes down, which drives the leg mechanism and of course causes the body to turn. And uh, these two gears are just there to, to to move this out a little bit. This is your Geneva drive under there. Here's the Geneva cam. And this cam is the one that raises and lowers the finger. The reason this frame changes color is I, everything in these robots were just printed out of whatever color filament I had around until I ran out. And that's where I had to do a, a filament swap. So it changes from blue to orange. But it just shows another angle of it. So now you can see how the cam... Oh, I ran a, a screw down and tighten the two nuts against each other to hold the cam in place. <clears throat> this is the leg cam. This is the, where the motor shaft comes down and drives this big cam and there's a cam in here and a cam over here and they drive the legs. He's showing the two legs painted. <clears throat> they were printed in whatever color plastic I had at the time. Showing the wheels. So they're normally in the locked mode. When they roll back, they can roll over the top of that and move to the back where they can freewheel, but then they immediately lock again. <clears throat> this is showing what it looked like. You can see the cams that I talked about that are in there. They're going to drive the legs. The legs fit into this bottom piece like you're seeing there. These two pieces get put in to entrap the legs so they can freely move but can't fall off. Here's that double cam we talked about. Here's two new pieces you haven't seen. They're both identical, so that you turn one in the upward position and one in the downward position, push them in place, then they drop in and they end up getting glued to the two legs. That way when the cams move, the legs move. This goes up on top of this whole assembly to form a platform for the roller bearings to run on, 
and a place for the uh, body turn to, to lock up, just like that. Here's showing the platform that the body's going to turn on, the close up of the beads and the pin. This is where the lock's going to go through, the bottom view of it. <clears throat> Once that's in place, this nut piece gets glued down on here, uh, all the way down, but left loose so that this can still spin free. It just can't come off. That keeps the body from separating from the lower leg half. And these cutouts in there were put in for the, uh, for the clicker test, which wasn't all that successful, so I probably won't do it again. Then you assemble your Geneva and drive onto it. It has the four legs that get glued in place. And this was the experimental clicker arm. And you've already seen them together, so I think that's probably pretty much the rundown of the whole thing. And again, if we move this back. And let's see if you're in frame, more or less. <clears throat> see, one of the nice things about it is if you grab the robot when it's walking, and then the body turns, if you were to hold that, it just makes the legs then go. The power is moved to the legs. It, um, it's more of a differential, meaning that the legs take more work to operate than the body spinning. So the body will want to turn, that finger locks the body so all power goes to the legs. When that finger is lifted up, then the body being the easiest thing to move, the motor spins around. It's not uh, very complicated. Makes for a very simple system.